Dr. Hoven, I have a two-part question. And it, the first part asks, were Adam and Eve real people or mythical characters? The second part, if they were real and created, from where then came the wives of Cain and others? Okay. Yes, I believe Adam and Eve were real people. I believe Genesis is historical fact. I believe the Bible teaches very clearly that Adam lived, if you read Genesis chapter 5, Adam lived after he begat Seth 800 years and had sons and daughters. You could have a lot of kids in 800 years. Especially when you consider they had the entire world, an infinite food supply, no crowded property like here in Southern California. They did not have to pay $50,000 to buy a square foot of ground. Uh, it was free. They had the whole world. So they had huge families back then. Jewish tradition says they had 56 children. I don't know. It's just Jewish tradition. But um, Adam and Eve's sons married sisters, which was very common practice for a long time and is still common practice in some cultures today. There's a tribe of people in one of the islands, uh, I think it's in the Indian Ocean, they're called the ostrich people, where they're required to marry family. Now, they've had so many degenerative problems with that, they only have two toes on their feet now. And their teeth fall out in the middle of the night while they're sleeping. They have real serious problems, you know. You see people like, even Charles Darwin married his first cousin just 150 years ago. He did that intentionally because he wanted to raise superior children. So it was, it was thought even back 150 years ago that, uh, you know, inbreeding was good. Some people thought that. Now, today we know, of course, it's pretty seriously wrong, but uh, Adam and Eve's children, here they had, marrying sisters is not a problem when you consider they had a perfect gene code, no, deform, no, dis, no defective genes like we have today. We have 3,500 defective genes. If you marry closer than a first cousin, you're asking for serious problems genetically. Uh, they had uh, uh, no other choice to marry but, but to marry a sister. You know, Adam married his own rib, so I don't see a problem with that at all. <laughs> I'm done. Um, yes, no, obviously I do not believe that Adam and Eve are literal people. Uh, but again, the Genesis story does have a lot of important lessons as far as the relationship between man, God, and Satan. And getting back to the intelligence of chimps, no, they're very intelligent, and they do pass on information. That's something we've learned. There were different cultures of chimpanzees that pass on different tool-making skills. Um, and that's well documented and it's been learned uh, by Jane Goodall uh, and other scientists. So, no, animals are very intelligent. And again, think of your pet, think of your dog, think of your cat. They're, they're very intelligent. We can communicate with them. And as far as um, the <clears throat> Adam and Eve, no, they weren't. And we're getting back to the issue of, which I touched on just recently, as far as were there a little literal Adam and Eve? And what if they hadn't sinned? Again, you know, do we have no cold at night, no storms, no earthquakes, no winter, no lightning, no forest fires caused by lightning, no meteor impacts uh, that would cause death? As you know, a massive meteorite hit the earth which caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. Lions don't hunt, dogs don't hunt, birds of prey don't hunt, alligators don't hunt, spiders don't hunt, T-Rex didn't hunt, sharks don't hunt, uh, snakes don't hunt. Uh, and even worse, I don't know, there was no TV. How long would it still have taken a long time to develop TV in the, in the Garden of Eden? Video games, no cell phones, etc. And the population would have exploded. We would have to say, well, let's stop. Let's, let's stop reproducing now. Same with the animals. It doesn't make sense. It would have taken a fundamental change drastically in the laws of nature. And that just doesn't happen. We don't, see, we don't see God working that way now. We don't see God change all the races into one to alleviate re uh, racial tension. He's very reluctant to make massive changes in the natural law. And he doesn't move a mountain around before it... it all right, we will extend this two minutes on either side, but I just want to make the comment that this will be, these will be the last speeches before our five-minute break. Okay, so two minutes, starting with Dr. Hogan. Okay, um, I, I have a concern then. He said he does not believe Adam and Eve were literal, which I, I knew that would be his position, but I have a question. Uh, Jesus certainly believed they were literal people. So you mentioned in, on your website and mentioned in your introduction tonight that you thought Jesus was deity, and yet it appears to me like you're saying he was either a liar or stupid because he believed in Adam and Eve. Jesus quoted Genesis 25 times, never gave one reference to not believing it, never gave one reference to it not being literally true, it was Jesus who said the creation of Adam was the beginning, Matthew 19.4, Mark 10.6, 10, 
Uh, the Bible teaches clearly there was no death at all of any kind before Adam sinned. That's what it teaches. So how on earth can you say Jesus is deity when you, you, you're you calling him a liar by your position? Do I get Dr. Hovind's extra time? Sure. Uh, okay, he said it. No, I'm just... He said he can have it. Add, if, I'll give you my time, but let me add one more point to that. Okay, sure, go, certainly. There it goes. When did the soul enter? If man evolved from an animal... At what point, exactly where, did the soul come into being? And, you know, assuming you believe, you mentioned it seemed to me that man needs to be saved. Exactly saved from what? And what, you know, what, when did this enter? You know, which caveman got the first soul? Okay, I actually, I discussed that on my website. I have a page that's called The First Saved Man on Earth. And I also have a, a web page, What Jesus Said About the Creation Story and the Flood. Jesus, the vast amount of Jesus's Words have to do with God, Satan, our relationship to God. They don't have to do with Genesis. Matter of fact, the entire book of John does not mention Adam and Eve. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, John 1.1. 1, 1. The same was in the beginning with God, John 1.2. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made, John 1.3. That's the level of understanding that is appropriate. It's not to give details when you don't understand detail. Jesus did not speak a lot about um, these things. It easily could have been figurative. It could have been exact, exactly not a, what he meant. Or writer embellishments. You can actually, I would encourage you again to read my page. As far as 19.4, all Jesus says was, he made a past uh, a comment. Um, they, they were created male and female at the time of creation. Something to that effect. It's very brief and very short. There's only a few passages along those lines. There are, they're the same comment mentioned a few times uh, in the three, uh, three Gospels, not John. So it's, it has to do with, again, evidence also. You know, you have overwhelming evidence for science, overwhelming for Jesus' deity, and also talking about evidence. There's three types of miracles, I think. There's a physical law, when physical laws are circumvented, and that happens very rarely, especially major type miracles. Um, but we, we do see them. Obviously, Jesus performed them. But, you know, I haven't raised too many people from the dead and, like Jesus did. And there, there aren't a lot of miracles like that. They do happen. There's coincidence miracles or, as is often called, providence miracles where God works certain things, brings people into your life. That's another kind of miracle which can more easily be explained. But to the believer, they know where it's coming from. It's coming from God. But I think the third type of miracle which is perhaps the most subtle and most important, is born again. When the controversy about God being dead occurred, they asked Billy Graham. Said, Billy Graham said, no, I know he's not dead because I talked to him this morning. And I talk to him every day. I feel his presence, his power, his guidance, as all of you do. That's the most subtle and power. And God, Jesus said, talking about Jesus' word, don't go look Time for is it. Up. The kingdom of God is with you. All right, there will be a five-minute uh, stretch break.